Now, everything old is new again. America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Welcome to Never Too Late, the late night talk show guaranteed to leave you asking, where did that hour go and how can I get it back? I'm Bradford Wells. Now, without further delay and before we become a trivia question under the heading, whatever happened to, here's Douglas Viviani! Ah, welcome, welcome, welcome to Never Too Late. It's terrific to have you here. I am no longer doing a monologue I've learned. Good. <laughs> from the last time. But I will rant and rave a little bit. I was on the way to work today, and I stopped up to get a cup of coffee at McDonald's. Now, I got to tell you, I'm as easy going as the next guy. You could tell that, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm very easy going. So easy. I and I, I give the lady, the girl, two dollars for the dollar forty-five cup of coffee, and I'm sorry, five dollars. So she's got to give me back the change. She gives me back these dollar bills, and then on top of that is balance the coins. She co- balances the coins, the change. All of a sudden, I'm an acrobat in the circus. I got to figure out how to get these coins in my pocket without dropping them on the floor. Could you please do me a favor, everybody out there? Give me the coins first and then the bills, okay? Good. It takes one second to take the coin and put it in my pocket and then take the bill and put it into my wallet. Then I'll take the cup of coffee and be on my way. Frustrating. Am I wrong? Now, listen, Good. the second thing is go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, so frustrating. Me, Very frustrating, Doug. I love Bradford Wells. He's terrific. Listen, uh, the other thing I have to say is I went to the pool place today. I'm getting ready for the next season of the pool and you walk into these pool places and you are looked like as an alien from another country because I don't know what alkalinity my pool is I haven't measured the acid level of the water in my pool listen I got news for your pool guy it's water in a hole in the ground. That's it. Good. Thank good. you. Thank you. Come on over to the couch, Bradford. Let's uh, <laughs> begin our show. It's a great show. We're having a nice time. Um, hold, hold on. Hold on a second. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, David Cohen from Everything Old is New Again, the radio show. Uh, yeah, hold. Just just wait a minute. First of all, I, Doug, I can't believe you're doing this. I heard about this late night show you're doing. Yeah, so. And you're not, you, you didn't include me. Who, who's this guy, Bradford Willis? You, I thought I was your sidekick. Clearly, you are overwhelmed with all the work that I give to you to do I, on the radio I'm show. just insulted, Doug. I, I, I feel, you know, I feel slighted here. I thought, you know, we were we were pals. We were partners I, in this. Listen, I, I give you credit every single show. I give you a nice little name. Matter of fact, let's go take a look at those names, right? I mean, I give you a nice little uh, send-off every so often. Welcome to Everything Old is New Again. How is that for beginning? This is Douglas Viviani with the ubiquitous, the spirited, ever-jovial, ever-feisty the ever fashionable, the effervescent, the charming, the rather sophisticated, the exuberant and vivacious, the rather animated, amicable, the ever present, the rather chic, delightful, urbane, the, the ever blissful, the ever carefree, <laughs> amusing, ever exuberant, ever lively, ingenious, patriotic, the ever urbane, the edible arrangement, the unparalleled, the lively, harassing. Ever jovial, combative, easy rider himself, nefarious, provocative, the rather debonair, ever fearless, irascible, the ever spirited, the ever grateful, the ever hip, David Cohen. So, right, there you go. So That's I mean, not enough. Uh, all those compliments. I, I give you more compliments than I gave my wife on the wedding night. So, <laughs> good. So, why doesn't it qualify me <laughs> to be in this position? Well, I'll tell you, this is why. I have a little clip here to show you why I actually do use those. Those adjectives. Catch phrases with the feisty and exuberant David Cohen. I'm getting a little uncomfortable with these <laughs> adjectives here. Feisty and exuberant. I don't know if they're appropriate. I feel like I have to live up to that now. That's why I do it. To give, to give you a little you know, oh, in the arm there, a little shot and uh, some of the, like a little adrenaline. Because otherwise I'm just this lump on a log no, is what you're saying. No, not necessarily. But yeah. hey, we could all use a little motivation every so often. All right. The vivacious Doug Viviani. Oh, see, I like that. That's good. Well, Viviani, by the way, uh, in, in Italian is another way of saying vivacious. Is it really? Full of life. Yes. Really? Yes. I did not know. A very, very, very rough translation, but we'll go with it. No, that's uh, that suits you. I did not know that. There you go. See, that Johnny Carson catchphrase. There we are. So, yeah, I, I gave you a little, uh, it's a little something to give you a little shot in the arm, because it seems like sometimes you come in, you need that cup of coffee from McDonald's, you know? Well, okay, fine, fine. But still, I, I mean, I'm better than this guy, aren't I? Who is guy? 
Brad, Bradford Well, Bradford. whatever's. What do you think of that? I have nothing but the utmost respect for Mr. Cohen, however I value my job and on this late night show with you, Douglas. You know what I have to say to that? Good. There you go. <laughs> Let's just listen to a little bit. I, I, you know, do you? I, the question is, do you always keep up with the show? Do you always listen to what's happening? What, what are you talking let's, about? Let, let's let's listen to a little something here. I like. I, I do think that the first round went to you with Mad Men. Put your sword down. I'm talking to you. <laughs> and the <laughs> sorry, I got carried away. I might be wrong. The final two of the best of the theme songs for the dramas. Ow. <laughs> I mean, that was from our uh, TV theme song show. So what was back. wrong? Because I was laughing? You got that sword out. You cut me. You know, you cut me on my finger. I still have the scar. You're not paying attention. You're not listening to what's going on. I mean, I, I don't know. This is what I have to... Listen, I have a better example. Oh, you really? You ready for this? this yeah, is, ahead, I'm trying. It. This is our ghost show, if you remember this one. Yeah. And I was sorely interrupted by Mr. David Cohen. I'm going to try to... Let's picture You're going to tell us a ghost, go, yes. ghost story? Through the, the magic... Of radio, we are now transported to a campfire. Yay! He uh, he gave he gave. <laughs> what? It's a little distracting. Those the, the bag of marshmallows. Oh, I'm just up there. Yeah, well, I'm trying to get into the spirit, right, so yeah. if you will, of the story. <laughs> he was wearing his sweater. She, well, he gave it to Hardy. He gave her his yes, sweater. Correct. I don't know. You can see that she. Well, she wasn't scared by this dude pulling over to the side of the road. Oh, marshmallows. I try one marshmallow at a time, Dave. Not all right. Stuffing them all at once. Uh, and the ambiance of the story is is going beautifully so far. There we are. And oh, sorry. So he went home two days later. Wait, wait. I have a question. Yes. When's the scary part? <laughs> the scary part is is your attention span. Two days later. <laughs> All right, so we have some fun there. I went with it, you know. Good. But I'm trying to... Even Bradford <laughs> agreed, see? <laughs> you enjoyed that? That's our ghost show. And by the way, you can hear, if anybody's listening to this, you can go ahead and hear our show that you've missed all year long from 2015 and even 2014 on our website, everythingoldisnewagain.biz, everythingoldisnewagain.biz. So now you're saying what? Do you think that uh, you need to be involved in the I'm, show based uh, on yes, that performance? Yes, definitely. Because, you know, one of the purposes I serve, Doug, is to is I bring out the best in you. I'm not saying Bradford doesn't do that, but but I encourage you and I, I, I say to people what, what's great about you because nobody knows how great you are, Doug. That's why I'm here. Oh, I like to hear that. Well, you know what we'll do uh, when we come back from the break? Uh, we'll I- explore that a little bit of how you've uh, supported me, if you will, through the 2000s. And uh, 15 season. In the meantime, I want to encourage you uh, to tune in to KMA. Uh, which is a brand new radio station that uh, they've been around, but they're a new station for us. They're a new affiliate, and they are an uh, affiliate that is close to my heart because they uh, uh, they carry the Royals and Cardinals baseball, believe it or not. They, they world champion Royals. And we are on that station every Saturday at 5 o'clock. And that is um, the AM and FM. The AM is 960, FM 99.1. That's KMA. And uh, I'll tell you, it's in Iowa, Shenandoah, Iowa. We are ecstatic. It also reaches out to uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, De- Des Moines, Iowa, Sioux City, Kansas City. Uh, we'll be right back. And everything old is new again. There's the audience. I was wondering what happened to them. All right, we're back for a few minutes here and, uh, to explore what we're doing. We're actually having a best-of show, I guess you'd say, no? What happened to the late-night TV show? Well, we're, we... <laughs> we're on our little extra time here, our two minutes that we, we talk to the podcasters and the Long Island LI News Radio uh, audience. We've asked the audience to exit while we have this discussion. That's right. This is for the special, those special few that want to tune in uh, when, when they're listening on the radio and working out or going to... I don't know, in the car somewhere, whatever it might be. So there have been some special, happy, fun moments on the show over the last uh, year. Any that come to mind that we uh, would you'd want to bring out to our attention that we haven't played clips for yet? Because there's, there's quite a few. We're going to have three shows of this, yeah. by the way. Oh, there are some great moments. Uh, I remember the, uh, the the eating contest. That was great. <laughs> I don't know how it sounded, but we had we had a lot of fun doing yeah, it. That's for sure. con- yeah, it was great, too. I, had a, I was able to write off my lunch that day. You know, I, <laughs> <laughs> and remember, I think the Twinkies, what was it? What, what the heck? I, I, the donuts. The donuts. 
donuts took me by surprise. I loved the donuts, yeah. but I didn't end up. I, I thought I was going to get hooked, but I, I haven't gotten in. No, that's donut good. Since. That, that is a good thing. Believe me. <laughs> exactly. The pizza, though, I've been rolling up the pizza like a taco and eating it like a. Really? Have you? Ever Come since. on. No, not really. <laughs> you want to eat the pizza fast? Uh, that's the way you go there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, th- that was a memorable one. Um, what just, about you? Played the guitar a couple times. I, was I did. I did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The best Don't, of that was the best of. We yeah. did, I'm sorry. The best TV theme song. Best TV theme song. That. I did that mix of Mary right. Tyler Moore and so on and so forth. Yep. God willing, you will not be playing that again on the clip show. Uh, we we might just to make some fun yeah. and have some fun. Anyway, we'll be right back with our late night talk show. Never too late on everything old is new again. Radio. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> You're listening to Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Okay, so we're back and thank you. See that, that applause? Was that for me, ladies and gentlemen? Or is it for me? All right. Well, we'll it's we'll for both it. of us. We'll That's it. the point. Of Absolutely. We're so a team. what I was saying in the last segment, what I started to say was, I think one of the other, you know, assets I bring to this partnership is I think I bring out the best in you, Doug. And, and, and you've got some or I've got some examples of that right now. All right. Well, uh, one of those, I think, is when we had a competitive eating show. Yes. And uh, let's listen to a little of that. That was so much fun. Uh, right. Man, if they could make a donut like that and fill it with lobster, that would be my last meal. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure they have. I'm God. sure they have dopesters or whatever they call them. I'm like, I, I can beat the record. I could do that. Where is I'm, this contest? <laughs> what was the record again? It, it's only Let seven me, and a half slices in 15 minutes. I could do that. Well, I want to be a champion at something. That's going to be it. How about that? Yeah. I was very juicy. And, that, and, it, and I had the idea for doing the, the competitive eating in the studio, right? Right. I, I don't know. I'm just saying that. I have well, no yeah, but I'm pur- trying to make my case yeah, here. For the purposes of this show, <laughs> yes, you came up with that idea. Absolutely. Uh, and it was a good idea. Um, it was executed well. We had uh, Mike Amodio was joined us. You remember our yeah, engineer? Of course. And we had a lot of fun with that. Mike is still here. Believe it or not, he survived eating that, uh, uh, that pizza uh, like a split second slower than I did. So, Mike, if you live that down in the circles that you're in, in, you know, people yeah, make it no, funny. Yeah, no, they still talk out. about it all the time. <laughs> and they, 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 they like kind of egg you on when you eat a slice of pizza these days and try to like tr- get you yeah, back into training. They want me to get revenge on you. Exactly. Yeah. I don't all think it's going to happen because I'm look. I'm still looking what? for that that pizza contest. If anyone knows where that is, I know I can do it. I can. I know I can. Hey, listen, Cruz Chef. Enough with the bang and the shoe on the table. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try one more. We had a little something, uh, some fun with the uh, Jurassic World show, if you remember that one, Dinosaur. 1858, they had something called Dinosaur Mania. Do you know that? The, the place you're, you're just you're making this up. I'm not. All you hear about is Civil War stuff all the time, the 1860s right. and all this. That was a big deal. And it, Lincoln loved dinosaurs. If it wasn't for the Civil War, he'd be known as a, known as a dinosaur president. You know why? Uh, no. Do you ever see like you go to Wikipedia or any any place <laughs> where you see pictures of dinosaurs and then have a little picture of a man? If you see this, and the man is wearing the top hat hat that Abe Lincoln is wearing. Come so on. I'm, I'm going to tell Come you that the on. the, the the <laughs> figure that they're using is Abe, Abe Lincoln because he loved dinosaurs. Who is the the symbol of the NBA? Isn't that um, the Jerry ball? West? Jerry West. Jerry West is the symbol of the NBA. If you see that guy with the you know the, with the ball. Oh, you mean the the logo? The logo. Correct. Oh, okay. So okay. The logo I for dinosaurs. About logo for the dinosaur <laughs> is Abe Lincoln with that hat. That's what I'm going to tell you. That's how significant he is in this the study of dinosaurs. Wow, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, I mean, sir, what do you mean the logo for the dinosaurs? Well, it's like, if you heard before, I say that, you know, when yes. you look at the dinosaur. Right, like, you see the caveman and in the you, front. No, you see a man with a top hat, that a hat that Abe Lincoln wears with the overcoat. That's the guy you see compared to the size of the brontosaurus. Oh, I see now. So, therefore, okay. Abe Lincoln, to me, is the same as Jerry West. I'm telling you. See, See you, made, you made me work for it, boy. But, but, but your personality came. You got impassioned about it. You know, it's better than just listening to And then the NBA guy is Jerry West. 
<laughs> and Abe Lincoln is a dinosaur. You don't think Bradford I, would make me, uh, you know, that uh, no, animated? No, Bradford, he's, a, he's a, a sycophant. He just laughs at your jokes and, you know. He does say good pretty good, though. He Love does. Him. Nobody could good. Nobody could. I could barely do it. So, <laughs> come on, man. Uh, you know, right, what but, else? You, but it took me forever to explain that to you. Goodness sakes, it wasn't that complicated. But all right. I mean, uh, <laughs> maybe it was. I don't know. You do I, represent- I like the, f- the fire under you, Doug. That's what I'm here to do. That's what I like. I couldn't do it without you. I, I do acknowledge that. Uh, let's see what, what you and I were able to explore when it came to Independence Day, our show on Independence Day, and a little discussion of Mickey Rooney and Julie Garland. So I'm liking your barbecue so You like far. that? I just yeah. want to make one yeah. comment about Mickey Rooney. I just thought it was funny. Oh, okay. In this movie, he's singing that song. I don't forget the name of the movie. And he's singing like a, like a loon and dancing like a loon. He sounds okay. But next to him stands Judy Garland, one of the greatest singers of all time. And he lets him, her sing back up. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's so funny to the, the ego, you know? Yeah. But anyway, back to, you, you're enjoying this so far. Uh, yeah. All right, so you, you do egg me on. Like, you, you're not really, I, I have to admit that some of these clips, you don't hear the feed line. In other words, the line that, you know, you got me ranting and raving about these little uh, things. Right. Um, yeah. And you that was me. me you do egg the me on. The guy sitting next to you. Yeah. yeah. So you still think that that works for a, a talk show, like on television? I have to interview other people, you see. I don't, I, it's not just you. That's the difference, you see. I want to interview, I don't know if you heard, I interviewed Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. I interviewed Michael McConaughey. I had a little problem with him. I interviewed uh, McCartney. McCartney. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Well, but I can introduce them just like Bradford can. What's the, what's the difference? I guess you could. Let's listen to, it's a long clip. I love it. Our discussion about baseball. Again, Mike Amodio was involved in that show. Right. right. Again, my idea to get Mike involved. Yes. Again, I, I had no thoughts to do that at all. It was <laughs> your idea. But we'll go with that for the, this premise, of course. Uh, but uh, he did egg me on as you did. It was a good discussion about baseball. We had two shows about that. Uh, in this show, we talk about time traveling. We were going back in time with the 60s and 70s baseball and specifically uh, Pete Rose. And that's the most exciting game I ever played in. I got to tell you, that guy, I mean, again, he has my complete admiration as a player. Which game was he referring to? The one where Fisk hit the home run or the one where they clinched? I believe it's the Fisk game. Uh, He just, I mean, I don't know. I would love to interview him, but he would be a hard interview. He's a real scooch. But he's, he's, (laughs) he really is. Is that an Italian? (laughs) (laughs) But he's a fascinating guy because you you can't, I don't, maybe I'm wrong. Am I wrong? Can, Can you not help but admire that guy's enthusiasm? Enthusiasm for what he did for a living. Oh, absolutely! I mean, as a player, you, you could—I would take him on any one of the any team. Well, when you were betting on your own team, <laughs> I, I'd be Charlie <laughs> Hustle too. <laughs> it's such fun playing the game of baseball, and I just think it's a great lesson for everybody. Do what you like to do, have fun with it. And you're going to be somewhat successful, and if not, it's not successful. At least you could say, "I did what I loved, man." What right. the heck, you know? All right, there you go. So you doing what you love? That's the, really the question. Would it be something that you love, or do you? have to do to be here to egg me on with these rants and raves i do for both doug for both reasons i love it and i have to be here (laughs) you have well do you have to be here because you love it or do you have to be here for some other reason yeah get wife kicks you out and get you out of the house once a week um yes yeah yeah, she wants you out of the house let's face it (laughs) Wants me out of the house, too. My wife wants me out of the house, too. My wife wants you out of the house, too. My, <laughs> my house wants me out of my house at this point. Uh, what can I tell you? It, it is an interesting uh, preposition. Yeah. And, uh, and you're winning me over little by little. I do right. see that you do egg me on. The best thing. Bradford uh, is already gone. He walked off the yeah, stage. I don't know what so happened he's, to him. Where, he's like, Bradford, you know, come on. He's like insulted, I think. I think he is, and he uh, should be. Now, where, where did you Bradford put this guy from? Do you remember his, you put his first appearance? We don't have a clip of it, but remember his first appearance, Bradford? Uh, that was, was about 2014. Hercules? We did the Hercules, Hercules. and we had found the um, the movie phone reel of right. discussion of Hercules that the Greeks had invented. And that's when we discovered Bradford was still alive, still around in the industry. And, yes. and uh, behind my back, you hired him as your sidekick for the late night show. That's exactly <laughs> what happened, isn't I, it? I, uh, yes. Okay. I think at this point what I'll do is I will defer to the commercials and we'll come on back to Everything Old is New Again. That's everythingoldisnewagain.biz if you're looking for us on the computer. Everything Old is New Again. Biz. We'll be right back.
Well, we're actually uh, a minute short there. That's one of the things you got me all riled up, and I signed off to go to the commercials, and meanwhile, we got a minute left to go. Right, because I'm the one that keeps you, you know, your eye on the clock here. You know what I mean? Without me, you ran over, and now we're in trouble. But you were here, and I ran over. We were discussing it, and I ran over. So while you were here, I Oh, I'm supposed over. to... Be, oh, now, now am I hired now on your late Listen, night TV show? Bradford am I... gives me the wave. He says, it's time. Mike Amodio, the, the engineer here, he's doing all these clips. He's got his head spinning. With I wasn't even supposed to be on this show, and now you now I'm supposed to have watched the clock for you? What's Good. going on? Good. <laughs> Quite frankly, that's all that guy did was he, he heard one of my monologues, my rants. He said good, and that's how he got the job. That's it. If you could say good, maybe I can get you back on board. We'll see what happens. Now we'll be back right after these commercials and see if Dave's argument will carry the day on. Everything old is new again. Come on back. We'll see if Dave wins the day on. What's the name of the show? Never too late. Never too late. Hey, Charlie, why the arm in the sling? Yeah, I walked straight into that busted street sign in front of Frank's Automat. Well, you must have been really sore at him. You said it, pal. I said, say, what's a big idea making a fella trip out there? I was going to sock him right in a kisser. He's all wet. Why, you ought to sue him, Charlie. I have half a mind to do just that. But where am I going to get that kind of dough? Say, I know a fella just got me out of a big jam, and he didn't break the bank. I don't say. Yeah, the law office of Douglas Viviani. The law office of Douglas Viviani? That's right, the law office of Douglas Viviani. Viviani. That's what I said, Viviani. Are you a straight shooter? He's a cat's meow. He's on the up and up? Doug's ace is with me. Is that so? He's a bee's bees. Well, that's just swell. You have his number? You can call him at 631-681-1910 or email him at vivianilaw.com. Wait, what, what was that last part? What, email? Yeah, what's email? Vivianilaw.com. Now, back to America's entertainment pop culture talk show. Everything old is new again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Welcome back to Never Too Late, that late night talk show that keeps you involved because all we do is tell the truth. That's the theme of this show. Dave, can you... Participate. I know you're, you're trying to lobby me to get uh, you as the uh, sidekick or what would you call it, an uh, announcer? I don't know what you would, what, what position are you applying for? I don't care, whatever. You want, me to, you want me to clean the toilets? I'll clean the toilets, whatever you want. But I'd rather be out here on the couch with you. And you're saying that, that didn't because... didn't sound right, David. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> I'd rather be your co-host. I am How's not that? playing this show for my wife, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, but I will listen to uh, you rant and rave with me about uh, about Raging Bull. We did a boxing show. I thought that that's was That's right. Fun. It was yeah. fun. I inject fun into this. You did rile me up. Are you at stake? Yeah, right now. Thank you. Happy? Happy? That's all I want. That's, That's all I want. Here. No more. There. Bottom me a steak, huh? That's great. You bought me a bottom steak? Yeah. Welcome to the Viviani's house Sunday night when you have dinner. I'm afraid to ask what happens in your house. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what. This is, did you hear that crowd? Yeah. I would like to just build a, like an amphitheater around my kitchen, and you would hear that that kind of a crowd. I could charge a dollar or two a person but just to watch who, dinner. Between who, though? Be, it's me and the kids and, and Juliana and, and, and me getting mad at me for yelling at the kids or me trying to grab her in from the laundry, doing the laundry to come and eat the food meal, the meal uh, you know, uh, on time when it's hot. She's telling me is a chicken every single time I cook chicken. I got she's got to ask me is the chicken cooked? I said yeah, of course it's cooked because she wants. She looks inside, pulls it apart. Is it just translucent? Uh, it just it just every meal is such a, a, a battle. It's a it's a boxing match. I really feel like sometimes I, I could be a, a, not a boxer physically, but a boxer mentally right. every single dinner, every meal time. Then Angelica gets up and she wants to do a dance. She hears a song comes on and she's gonna do. A dance and so she gets up and she moves something on the table and down goes the milk and who's <laughs> cleaning that up and then there's Leo he doesn't want to eat here he has a little itsy bitsy table little kids say he wants to eat at the kids table he's not at the regular table and he's got to have his Captain America in his hand so the question is where's Captain America who gets to run upstairs to his bedroom to get the little figurine Captain America so he can drink his milk with Captain America in his hand otherwise he won't drink his milk <laughs> 
<laughs> I, and laughing at it now, but I am a chill went up my spine because yeah. I got to go home to dinner after this show tonight, <laughs> and this is going to happen again. Good. Oh, <laughs> Bradford's, Bradford's back. There he is. Yay. All right, but you, you did get me riled up that show. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun to hear it. It was a funny story. Uh, you know, hopefully you not did take me but... on. The, no, it is definitely true. It's not. I'm telling you, I I have to. I say I nothing mean, on the show that is not true. I didn't mean to rile you up. Again. <laughs> oh, this is just more, more or less just trying to. Uh, that was appeasing. I could turn it on like that, baby. Exactly. Just like, like you did that. here, freaking Stephen Colbert. True. This is great because I believe that's when my health insurance kicks in. This guy is such a fraud. This guy is such a pretender. This guy is such a goof. Why do you say that? Oh, man. He doesn't believe in anything that he said, anything he said in the past, anything he says now. He doesn't stand for anything. It's it's as bland as bland can be. And uh, and let me let me say this. Now he's going to try to differentiate himself by putting politicians on late night TV. He's going to get serious. Then he's going to have comedians following that. It's a bad, to me, it's a bad man. I don't want that's not a guy why I want talking to me I'm sorry it's not a guy that I can relate to and guess what I don't want to see politicians at 1130 at night I've had enough aggravation in my day all day long I don't need to have more aggravation than some goof telling me what he's going to do and that they never end up doing it I'm sorry that's me you tell me yeah, well, you tell me. That. <laughs> Does that work for you? That got, you got me so riled up with that Stephen Colbert. And I think, it, I think I'm right. They had to take a week off and rewrite that show. They really? still got They don't have any ratings whatsoever. <clears throat> He'll be off the air and sitting on this couch next to us. Before, well, that's too far of a fall, Doug. Come on. Well, he ended the month. He doesn't deserve that. <laughs> but, yeah, but you're yeah. right. We were both right because we both thought he was just not a good pick. Right. But you're right. egging me on. You're lighting yeah. that fire. Yeah. And then I get, I get, I want to turn the screws back on you. I have a little motivation. To, ugh, got to get this guy. Who's only doing that? Uh, Martin Landau loved just doing those dialects and the different characters. And Nimoy's like, yeah, once I did a character, once I did a dialect, that was it. There was no emotion. There was no conflict. There was nothing for me to do. Right. Meanwhile, he played a character that had no emotion on Star Trek. So it's it's interesting. The, that, that is, the yeah, that's, acting juxtaposition. That, that, that is actually interesting, Doug. I, I'm shocked. I'm glad you like that. I'm going to play three <laughs> clips now in a row. People of Kefaro, I would suggest... Uh, Does that voice sound familiar? Eliminate. Fox Sounds like Death. Spock's dad. No, General. It sure is. And? Listen. No. The answer is not to get rid of him, but to get around him. That is Spock's dad and Spock himself, but they're not on Star Trek. Oh, they're on, they're on Mission, what? Mission Impossible. Impossible. Listen to this next clip. You'll love this one. I do it myself, Excellency. Please don't. I prefer you send someone more intelligent. <laughs> hey, what are we got here? Look, 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 look at this. Who is this one? Listen to this voice. If it be true that I do think there it's are Shatner. five good reasons why we should drink. Same episode you got from Hogan's Heroes, Verna Klemper, if you remember. Yeah. And he's talking to Nimoy uh, on the same episode as Nimoy's calling Nimoy names. And then on the other side is Shatner acting like a fool or a drunken fool in Man from Uncle. Wow. All right, so now that's from our secret agent show. And by the way, Stephen Colbert was from our late night TV show. We did two of those. Actually, we did three because we then did, of course, created this show, which is never too late, as the third of those. Right. But, yeah, so I, I have to zing you every so often because I know you love these Star Trek references. Probably 75% of the shows we do have got a Star Trek reference in there. But it's got it's become a gimmick, though, right? Because you, you feel like you have to get back at me because I made fun of you for the Star Trek references. It's become a staple of the show. And by the way, you're welcome. <laughs> it's a staple because you've motivated me. So i got to get in there and i got to get your ire up because you get me so riled with all these, uh, I don't know, all, all these rants and raves. The other side of the fence is that you're a gentleman. <laughs> You're like an English dictionary. So when I don't know the way I pronounce a word or how to pronounce a word, I go to young David Cohen. So it's a drop in the bucket compared to how long these dinosaurs were on the planet. I sound, think I have a, is that like a New York accent, dinosaurs? How do you really sound that? Say that. No, actually, you pronounce that without an accent. I was going to compliment you on that. <laughs> you usually say dinosaurs. 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 <laughs> like, they were the dominant theme in, uh, you know, now not so much because, you know, they're not around. All right, so there's a man of many uh, talents, one of which is being the new Webster himself. Thank you. I'll give okay. you a compliment for that. Thank you. But I don't and think I want to be corrected on the air all the time. I, all the time? 
No, only when you're wrong. I'm just trying to get riled up. You <laughs> get me riled up here, but uh, as I'm wrong a lot. If you ask my wife, that's for sure. Uh, and also, and also, uh, just so you know, when I do correct you, I I'm probably wrong too. But it's fun to just correct you <laughs> and come off like uh, the know it all over here. But if you li- probably listen back to everything I've been saying, ninety uh, percent of it's probably wrong as well. <laughs> well, you say it with such conviction. There you go. Such you know, like this is the way you pronounce this word, or you've I you know, sell it. Especially when we do with these affiliates. I try to figure out how to pronounce the name of the affiliates and or you know where the you know town what the town is from and I, I can't get it right so I want to make sure that I get that right. I'm here for you. What else do you want? All right. Well, I mean, Bradford's here for me, too. That's for sure. He's got a lot of experience. He's documents. sleeping. Look at him. He's out like a light. I think that's part of the problem. Is that He's he 85 years old. <laughs> not that I'm, I'm not ageism thing here. <laughs> not creating that. Well, I'll but. tell you, he, he's used to a documentary. So to get him to actually laugh and be comedic, that, you know, is somewhat of an issue. Because, um, you know, he doesn't really have the sensibility that young David Cohen has, which we will investigate uh, when we return uh, to sort of a best of show of everything old is new again. That's what Dis- it's turned into. Yeah, disguised yeah. under the uh, the guise never too late. of never too you late. Remember, See, here I am again, reminding you of the name of your late night show. <laughs> and it's Fernwood tonight. It was emulating. Remember this one? Yeah. Come on back. There we are. Everything old is new again is returned for our two minute extravaganza uh, <laughs> that we discuss uh, behind the scenes or whatever it might be. Do you have any pet peeves, by the way? I'm going to throw the chat. You. I didn't prepare this. OK. But, uh, do you, you have any pet peeves? I, I brought up a couple at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Uh, do you have any that come to mind or should we move on to another? Well, topic? my biggest pet, pet peeve is and this has been going on for a while, but people speaking in I figured there's a phrase for it now in, in question form oh. when they make a statement. And using starting every uh, answer to a question with the word "so." All right, Have so you I'll ask you a that? question. So, uh, David, what do you think? So far, we've had a, a nice time with reviewing sort of the best of everything old is new again. Is it something that you're enjoying? Are you looking forward to the next segment? So, yes, I am. Uh, I think we have a lot of good things coming up in the next segment. Uh, we have some old clips from you know the shows that we've done before. You see what I mean? Yes. And everybody talks like that. Yes. What's your name? So my name is David. Hey, where did that come from? I don't know. I'm picking a jury the other day, and nine out of ten people, you know, I'll ask them a question like, okay, you know, have you ever driven a, a vehicle on this road? Are you familiar with this area? So I um, I'm not familiar with Riverhead. So it's like, <laughs> huh? Like, so it's not. This is not like a continuing drama. Right. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So that's my pet peeve. So and like, more is, is more so with so than the the, the, the question statement. All right. Thing. Well, isn't so supposed to be like in the middle or even a, a an end of a, of like a story? Like uh, you know, I went to the beach and I did this and I you know I my the water came and so my bathing suit fell down here. Believe that you know you right. Know, I was in the water. It's supposed to be a, a, a connecting to two a thoughts, conclusion. right? Not not to start a thought. It's ridiculous. All right. Well, let's continue. Um, this is not a pet peeve, Fernwood. Tonight. Well, it is the fact that it's not on the air anymore. That's a pet peeve. Yeah. So why isn't it? No, okay. But that was a good... I think that's so belonged in there, right? So why didn't they? So yeah. what? <laughs> this is Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. <laughs> Listen to that applause. Thank you, everyone. No, Thank that's you. for me. I'm on stage here on Never Too Late. Bradford, you could have introduced me if you like. Feel free. I'd like to hear you do it. That's why you're hired. Miss Viviani! It's not so bad, Usually right? Usually followed by an applause, but not this time. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> I don't need to have applause followed me everywhere I go. But I do need to know that my uh, co-host has some skills, some special skills. Uh, what do you, uh, you and I, we like the same things. That's a special skill, Correct. isn't it? Listen to this, the Marvel that, that comics. That was Thor. It was the worst of the... of the. Um, you, know, you know what? The Submariner was really bad because they actually spoke the words. Mm. Um, but Thor was the second to worst theme song of the Marvel cartoon. So are you pre- presenting yourself as the historian of the, the comic book uh, cartoon uh, theme songs? I, th- I think I'm making that pretty clear. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But right. Think about Captain America, the theme, the, the words to that summed up Captain America. All just right, Mr. History, can perfectly. you tell me some of the words to the, the, the 1960s theme? 
when Captain America throws his mighty shield, all those who chose to oppose his shield must yield. Can I just say one other thing about the Hulk theme song? Yes. One of the best rhyming lines ever in the history of pop songs, I guess. Really? Yeah, when uh, uh, Dr. Banner, belted by gamma rays, turns into the Hulk, ain't he unglamorous? There you go. I mean, I got to tell you, there's not many people that know what we just heard there. There you go. I don't know if that's good, though. Uh, but isn't our job to to mine history and and to make people aware of the of the intricacies and the interesting facts You're that right. have happened you, before us? You really did add to that discussion, which which went awry. <laughs> we were talking about uh, Marvel comics, and, and that we did a show on DC versus Marvel. We did right. a couple of shows on uh, superheroes. As we, well. not you and Branford, Come me right. and well, you. I, I'm not. Listen on the radio. You're superb. In person, you're superb. On television, does it translate to a television audience? Can we hear from the audience, please, what they think? All right. Let's Is there hear. any way? Audience, stop looking at me like that. Thank you. All right. All right. So you're winning them over. You're winning them over. Let, let, good. Even Bradford. Bradford. That's what say good. Say no. All right. Let's try Saturday cartoons. You had a nice participation there, too, I think. And, uh, Dave, do me a favor. Pass the Frosted Flakes and let's sit down and listen to some, watch oh, some, yeah. some of these shows. Never heard of it. Never heard of Sugar Frosted Flakes? They're great. That's some episode. We had, loved that Wacky Races, huh? Oh, that was great. Uh, the, hey, the check this out. Uh, the, the, the Pop-Tarts now, they're coming with frosting on them. Whoa. As if, as if you know, sugar with, with sugar jelly filling wasn't enough. Now they're going to put glazed sugar on top of it. Got to give you a hint. I used a fork the other day, like last Saturday, getting it out of the toaster. And the toaster, you know, didn't pop up yet. A little bit of a charge. Oh, d- oh what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> dangerous. That's why I'm sticking with the Lucky Charm. Arms. Oh, yeah. They're well, magically delicious. They are. They are. The little marshmallows. Oh, those shapes. are great. It's tremendous. Do you remember the the, the the Wacky Races story that was just one race car after the next, after the next, with goofy, wacky things going on uh, in a race? It and was e- fun. Even the cartoons had spinoffs because the Wacky Races had, like, two spinoffs from them. Right? I think we're going to watch that now. We're going to sit down and watch Penelope, P- Penelope Pit, Pit Stop, Stop or the adventures of Penelope Pit Stop at some other shows as we sit down and enjoy some Penelope more cartoons on Saturday. Saturday morning. All right, that was our Saturday morning extravaganza. We did two shows a Saturday morning. Cartoons. We did. We showed up in our pajamas here. Come on. Who else could you do that and with? And we time traveled through the experience of radio, the the, the full-blown radio experience. It, 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 it brought us right there yes. with these clips and your discussion about the Pop-Tarts and Lucky Charms. So, yeah, you did add uh, a bit to that. We had a lot of fun uh, talking about Saturday morning cartoons. And if you missed any of these shows, you can find them now on the website. Everything old is new again. Dot biz. That's Aren't, yeah, go ahead. Everything old is new again. Dot biz. I didn't think you were going to say it the second time. That's why That's why I'm here. See, again. he's there keeping, uh, keeping an eye. All right, well, Bradford's um, is sort of uh, an Oculus there. He's sitting on the end of the couch, and he's sort of nodding off. Maybe this will either wake him up from this wonderful singing performance, or it may lullaby him even to a deeper sense of sleep. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm going to demonstrate to you how those three songs are all purposely or not based on a very similar chord structure. Here we go. This is going to be a medley of those three songs, so you can hear how they're very similar. Who can turn the world on with her smile? Who can take a nothing day and suddenly make it all seem worthwhile? do 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 Discouraged the man, he ain't so hard to understand. Do, 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 do. <laughs> there he is. Bradford woke up. What do you have to say about that, Bradford? Good. He woke up from those. The <laughs> I think he thought the place was infested by mice or something. He woke up with. 
I don't know what that sound. No, that was great. Uh, that was a great little uh, kind of respite we had you know, on our TV c- TV theme song uh, show. Yeah, about so the there's some ones. creativity. I mean, you know, no offense to you, Bradford, but you know, I don't think you could have done that and and you know turned viewers That's off. That's why you are the best off. co-host in radio. Yeah. And let's uh, see. <laughs> Let's see if we can, um, I don't know, put the the lid on this here on this particular show and listen to what your position was when we did our old time radio show and we talked about the future of radio. That added a little something. Just saying. Any any ideas, Dave? Or well, what, so what what has to happen for that for this like evolution? People have to listen to everything old is new again. Well, that's a start. And uh, and at least consider that. Wait a minute, there is something different out there. We are trying yeah. to do a little something different to, to bring something fun to the radio. Right. Um, that radio ha- is fun, but there's, there's room for more or people to, to get involved uh, in a radio on the radio station side and say, let's let's expand the programming a little bit here. There's, how many times can I hear Al from from Flushing talk about the Mets and need to score more runs right. than the, right. the Dodgers? I mean, you know, like at right. some point, I don't need to put it down. I mean, it's just kind of be, trying to be funny, but there, there's more to it. That's right. great discussion, but there's more that we can do. You hear you going like this? Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Get through it. yeah. <laughs> no, I was agree. I was agreeing with you. I was. I was trying to be vivacious. Whatever you were calling me, the eight hundred things you've called me in the past at the top of the show, and I and I mean every one of those. And I do have to say that, uh, and I've said it before, that this is um, uh, a show that could not, in any way, shape, or form, pr- be produced or, or have nearly the one hundredth of the quality that it has now um, without your uh, participation. I certainly uh, appreciate you being along the ride here for. The last uh, uh, year, uh, and we're just celebrating the year. We've been together more than a year, but uh, for this particular year of 2015, uh, Happy New Year to everyone out there. We are experiencing yes. uh, a new year of hope and, and thrills and adventure and romance for all of us. Um, this is uh, the best of everything old is new again, and uh, that's what we're listening to. We're going to do this again, uh, whether you like it or not, under a different guise next week, and again the following week. We have so many best ofs. Three best ofs. I could have done even more, but I felt I had to put a stop to it at some point and actually do some new shows. But uh, I thought that this was uh, something that was fun. It was. And so can I just can I meet you halfway on this uh, never too late yes. night, night show that we're doing in front of this lovely audience here? Yes. Can can Brad, could I fill in occasionally for Bradford? You might be able to do that. Or maybe we can have a segment with you, do like a special segment of uh, a certain discussion when when we need a, you know, have a musical guest or some guest that. that that has some something that's right up your alley. You could be the co-host. Maybe we can have Bradford be the the person that introduces the show, but you be a co-host for sections, if not all of it. We'll think about it because you're you're winning me over little by little. There's been some uh, some progress here. I see where I've <laughs> I've gone wrong. Because uh, Bradford, what do you have to say about all this? What do you think? I'd be happy to share the responsibilities with the young. That's David. why I had to resurrect your career from nowhere because you really don't have the ego and the drive uh, to be number one. Yeah, and I respect. Bradford for everything he's done over the years. So thank, thanks for taking my side, Bradford, and hopefully we can both continue to to make Doug the into the star that he's destined well, to become. It's, it's only going to continue. Good. <laughs> it's only going to continue if you keep on listening to everything old is new again. Come on back next week with more best of. Or for LI News Radio, you can stay right here for uh, a minute and listen to the recap of this show, which we're doing right now as yes. we speak. Um, recap you, of the recap. Recap of the recap. Uh, there's uh, quite a bit there. What about playing the guitar? Do you think you'll do that again next year? No. No, you don't. <laughs> How about if we resurrect the band? We could do uh, one yeah, of these shows. Yeah, uh, let's do that. To bring in the, let's do the that. Keyboard. We should play the, the... We did a demo 100 years ago. If that's still around. I have the demo. We can do that. We could play just like little clips, little excerpts of it. Exactly. We have... Uh, cool. I think we did two songs. Yeah. Both written by uh, a young David Cohen, a real young David Really Cohen. young, yes. Uh, and uh, they're actually fun. One's called The Twilight Zone. The other one's called... Um, she Was A... Wow, can we say that these days? She was a Jap. She was yeah. a Jap. A uh, Jewish American princess, That's, right? We can, because nobody uses that anymore, right? <laughs> exactly. So, anyway. All right, come on back next week. Everything old is new again. We're having some fun. Hey,